to Electrician Live with your host, Paul Abernathy and Jay Grunberg. What up, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Electrician Live. My name is Paul Abernathy, your co-host, and the other host is none other than the basement king himself, Mr. J. Grunberg. Grunberg, welcome to the hey, show. Hey, Paul. Yeah. There you go. It's an honor to see you again, my friend. Been a, been a busy week for you up there in Colorado. It has been a busy week, man. We are uh, putting in about 50 to 60 hours a week, um, depending on what job site you're on. And we actually were we were going into Friday thinking that we may have to cut work into a half a day because of this huge snowstorm that's supposed to come. And I say that now. No snow on Friday. We rolled into this morning thinking we were going to have some snow to go play in. No snow this morning. I look outside now and there's probably about an inch on the ground so uh, an inch so uh, well that's okay. an inch so far so that's that's actually good news because we were able yeah. to work and and we're not snowed in now monday comes around we may maybe a different story but maybe a different story it's texas yeah. i think it was in the upper 70s today something like oh, that beautiful it was, it was awesome it beautiful. was definitely definitely awesome to be here so um, week's been pretty steady. Hopefully everybody out there listening or watching, if you're over on the podcast, we love our podcast, but we would love to chat with you over here on the video stream. So go to youtube.com forward slash master the NEC. Also, we want to tell you, please share this with all of your friends, uh, share it in all the social media forums. Let them know that there's actually a show for electricians that you can have a, a part in by simply sending information to me and Jay at host, H-O-S-T, at electricianlive.com. And you can make suggestions for sh future shows, ask questions, we'll talk about it on a show, uh, all those type of things uh, moving forward. And also, Jay. They need to go to electricianlive.com and they can see the upcoming schedule, watch rebroadcasts of the show. They'll all be there if you can watch them. And so great content over there as well. So, all right, enough yeah, of that make out sure of the way. You, make sure you come to the Electrician Live though. I think we were talking earlier about possibly even teeter-tottering into changing the day of the show um, into a weekday possibly. And so... Um, yeah. I'm interested in, in yeah, if what anybody the has viewers' some thoughts are. Yeah, they got any feedback? We're thinking we we have a date that a, a day of the week that we think would work best for it. Kind of get you primed, right for the certain weekend, but not right at the. You know, we got some ideas on that, but we'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, you can email us at host h o s t at electricianlive dot com. So welcome Nick, welcome Daniel, welcome everybody yeah. in the chat. Feel free to type in your name, where you're from, maybe give us some information, holler out. Love to see you in the chats. Love to love to have you in here. Um, so also, I guess we should I guess we should talk about our our sponsor for this uh, this evening's show. As you can see, the links at the bottom of the screen, or actually the banners. Uh, CBD Pure is sponsoring this episode. So go over to. Uh, masterthenec.com that's our website and you'll see a banner there click on it and you click on it and it'll get you to the page you need to be at to find out whether or not you want the oral spray the drops the cream you know i'm thinking i need some cream today i'm thinking i need some cream today <laughs> jay um <laughs> those arms of yours are a little tender over there there's <laughs> a little bit sore on my arm now for those that want to know it, smack you through the screen <laughs> So if people want to ask me, say, what, Paul, did you actually do some, what are they going to say, Jay? Paul, did you actually do some work today? <laughs> no, well, I, it's Saturday, but I did go and get my COVID shot. One of two. Yes, I caved in and got my COVID shot. And you know what they say? They said one of the side effects that it, was, it will make the area sore. <laughs> they ain't lying. That is one of the side effects. It, it is sore. Now, that was the first shot. 
I got the Moderna or the Madeira or whatever it was. Supposedly, three weeks from now or whatever it is, we were supposed to go get the follow-up shot, that the second one. They didn't have the Johnson Johnson one. Anyway, so I like I like to go bold too, Jay. This one was that 90 yeah. some percentile. <laughs> so anywho, I went and got it today with my wife and uh it it, it was a sore. I, you know, a couple hours a couple hours in, I was like, what is everybody? Wussies. And then, you know, it hit me about an hour ago. I was like, man, that's actually pretty so that's actually pretty sore. But not you know, it's obviously better than getting COVID, right? So well, and that's uh, that's what they were saying. Is any shots better than than no shots? So whether or not you do this two shot system or the Johnson and Johnson, like my something. cousin did in Washington, get something in you. Well, if somebody said to me, um, they said, "Well, you feel like a guinea pig," and you almost do, right? Because what this thing is not FDA approved. If, whether you trust the FDA anyway, um, but. Even with the FDA one, there's tests and all, but it's not as scrutinized. This one was really scrutinized. I mean, because of the pandemic, because of the process pushing it through, and all, it was it was really scrutinized. So I felt safe about it, um, and so we went and, went and got it. We've already had COVID J in my house. Uh, if you remember or not, my my son actually got COVID, so we had to navigate that. But um, our city's giving it now, and it was right down the street. And I'm like. But I uh, haven't had any other effects other than, you know, sore a little bit. And that'll go away. That'll go away. Hopefully. Tomorrow. We haven't been tomorrow. affected by the COVID. What's, we, ha we haven't uh, been affected in the house with the COVID. We've been affected through work-related. Like a few of my coworkers. There's one of my coworkers' son had it. And um, then see another coworker, team, his see, girlfriend, had it. See what a team player Jay is with his people. He calls them coworkers. They're employees, but he's or, like, yeah, they're, employees. they're my coworkers. You know, <laughs> it, 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 as if Jay actually got out there and did the work. Oh, wait a minute. You did go out and do work, didn't you? Yeah, he, he, he did go out and do some work. All right. <laughs> I did a job walk and I actually, so, oh, this is, this is what I was going to tell you. Um, I did a job walk. And we'll get into the problem um, starter solver. I have really yeah. We good have a topic stories, tonight. But, uh, we do have a, We do have a topic. We're going to cover tonight. Trust <laughs> me. We, we will cover it. But um, and and this was actually a good topic to being a problem solver. Um, we we're in a basement. We do this. It's about a seven hundred square foot basement, maybe eight hundred square foot. And there's a little tiny mechanical room, and on one of the walls, a perfect place for the panel. We have the clearance and and everything that the panel needs. And so we're like, okay, we'll just put it right here. Well, on the other side was where the TV is going to go for the gym area and where they're going to mount the TV because the ceiling had a soffit. So unlike a normal eight foot ceiling or nine foot, this was like a seven foot, six and a half or whatever. The soffit dropped it down a little bit to, right. to whatever the bottom was. And so it was, the TV had to drop down and they were going to put the two by fours right where our panels panel was at. Well, the guys had, had already run the circuits out. They've run the SDR already, for the they've already laid everything out. They've, they've laid everything out and it's it's almost terminated, all terminated. So the solution was to just um, bump the panel out, bump it out enough to where on the back side they could still fit that solid, I don't know what they use, a two by, it's, it's, it's like a two by one, I believe, or it, it's not as thick as a two by, it's a block though. It's a nice size block that they use. It is a two by four, but they, they use those to put, so they had to recess it in. So we just bumped our panel out a few inches. Mm -hmm. Worked out. So worked out. And the, the homeowner kind of, he made a big deal out of it. Oh, you guys are just doing a band aid on the, on the, on the issue. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You were perfectly fine with the panel here before. Now that your TV goes here, you want us to just relocate it. We came up with a solution that wouldn't cost you any money because you agreed to it being there. And it doesn't cost us any extra labor, so. Homeowners, problem man. starter, problem solver. You were a solver, <laughs> which could have been a problem starter. You could, I, I you think you could have said, with you know, the homeowner. Now I see Elwood says that he was tested positive for COVID, but uh, before Thanksgiving, but he ended up being okay. Thank goodness for that, Elwood. Oh absolutely. yeah, for sure, absolutely. Good job, Elwood. Oh, absolutely. And I think Elwood's chiming in from California too. I know Nick's from Dallas and. 
Daniels from Texas, so they're kind of in your your, oh, your yeah. neck of the woods. Yeah, ta- uh, Texas folks. I'm up here in North Texas. I'm in McKinney. If you're ever up this way and you want to grab a coffee or something, even though I kind of always boy- boycott Starbucks, I still have one. I uh, will meet at a coffee house. I'm up here all the time. Holler at me if you're in the area. Um, coming up this way, you wanna, you know, you wanna shoot the breeze, if you will. All right, so let's talk about tonight's uh, tonight's topic, um, and that is: Are you a problem starter or a problem solver? Jay, I'm gonna let you take the reins on this. Um, sure. I will say that I will keep an eye while you're doing that. The lines we do have lines open tonight. If somebody wants to call in, if I catch it. If you have a story that's relative to this, something to do with problem starters, problem solvers, uh, opinions on it, uh, this can kind of go a bunch of different ways. Because, you know, every time we do a, a show, Jay, that or I, I talk to people about job site actions, how they react, how they, yes. how they carry themselves. And I, I usually, it, it seems like it depends on the social media that it's shared on. For example, over in the Instagram I think that a lot of those young people are crazy anyway, so they're like, oh, you're too uptight. You know, they, they jump down my throat trying to keep something professional. And I, I think that I, I think what we talk about is uh, setting the tone, setting the image, carrying the profession. Again, some of those people that act that way don't have any desire to be an owner. They don't have any desire to be the leader. They don't have any desire to be the decision maker. And I get it. And they just want to have fun. And, and okay, that's, and that's all right. I'm not judging anybody. But I, I was just saying as a kind of preface this is some people get offended very easily today. But they get offended when we say something like you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, or whether you're a problem starter or something, you know, and they're like, well, I'll say what I want. I get it. But it's, again, some environments are ripe for that and some are not. And it just depends on your, you know, what environment you're dealing in. But anyway, I just want to set that tone because I'm sure there's people that will say, I'm young, I'm free, I'm going to act a certain way. That's fine. Yeah. But, but let's and talk And, you know, about that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of the mentality that um, even, even newer guys coming in to the trade that don't have much experience, they still – just because of today's society again they're they're a little more sensitive to sure. that um constructive criticism right and and whether you're a problem solver that day i i really think it's daily um i think people do have a habit and and you can they're just toxic right um and and a lot of those guys are problem starters um they tend they to get on the job never, site and they probably never are solver they just constantly starter I did just a, constantly. I, I did a podcast. I guess we've talked about it before a while back. That was about how to remove the cancer from your company, right? So it can be. You know, Homesdale says I'm both. I'm a problem starter and a problem solver. Hey, as long you know what, if you start the problem and you solve the problem, then there you go. You you, you sorted it all out in a day. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we all can probably fall into these different. It doesn't. One thing, Jay, is you is you'll go on with this, but. One thing I will say that sometimes even a problem starter, it's not somebody that's being a, an arrogant or being problem. It might be, for example, I was probably classified as that a lot early on, especially when I was really heavy into the code and on the job when I was a head of a, a jurisdiction. I probably yeah. did start a lot. I probably started a lot because if I saw something that wasn't right, I created a stink over it. Sure. You could call that a problem starter. There's different levels of it, right? And you'll talk about it. But in my case, I was the kind of guy who never gave anybody a problem start unless I gave them a solution. I'll start something, but then I'll tell them how they can fix it or how they can you know, rectify it. Okay, now that's a different type of problem starter. Problem another di- a type is somebody just goes on a job site and just does nothing but cause problem. Oh, that's all they—they they just gossip maybe about their yeah. life outside of work. And and so when I when I was an apprentice coming up into the trade. I started in commercial. I was actually, my wife and I. We, um, he's asking, can you ask a question? Yeah. Oh, yeah, asking, of course. If you're asking a code question, no. If you're asking a question that's germane to this topic, go ahead and type your question out. And when Jay finishes his thought, we'll, we'll give you your comments on it. Go yeah, ahead. either type it out or give us a call. Um, the phone number is 214-945-0653. You can call in 
to yeah. Honesdale and, and talk about it if you want. But uh, so when I came up in the trade, I was um, about two or three years out of high school. Um, I got in, I dabbled into some, some bad stuff. I kind of was rebellious against going uh, further educating myself in school. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take a couple years off and kick back and relax. And then the alcohol came in and other other substances that just at that young age, you, you, you just, you're kind of that CBD? person that your environment's in. I, I actually switched to CBD, which is a lot better. So I'm, I'm on the go. right path now. And hey, so, there you go. so we were, we were, we were going down there in the Springs in Colorado Springs. And I was working for a temp service and get there every morning, man. You'd, you'd be there at six o'clock. If you were there, if you're the first 10 in line, you'd get a job that day. And go. so I was, I was out on a job. I was working, um, at a shopping center, a, a strip mall. Um, Jay, you got, oh, a, no. serial, you got a serial <laughs> yeah. poster now telling all of your true past. Go, go figure <laughs> the night that, I, ta- that right? I open up. Yeah, he's <laughs> opening right. up tonight. He's opening it up, up about his past and all of a sudden his, his alter ego jumps on. <laughs> Don't don't be a problem starter, okay? Listen there you go, <laughs> Jay. You're a problem starter. Uh, oh man, and so and so I'm working at this strip, um, this, mall, this shopping center, strip, strip mall, mall, yeah, strip strip, strip bar, no strip mall. Okay, sorry, <laughs> and, uh, I was going to go really bad there for a minute. I was yeah, like, okay. No. And so we we're cleaning. I was cleaning up the job site, and I was hustling a lot. And the, the electricians, they really liked the attitude I had. I, I would always try to bring a positive attitude and take care of those. That, that were around me really didn't have much. So um, it's kind of just kind of a loner type of kid at the job site. Um, and next thing I know, I was, I was busting tail for about three months. And these guys were getting into the last unit. It was a TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and a Ross. And they were just getting into the TJ Maxx. And they needed help. And, and they knew I showed up every day. So they were like, hey, can we, can we take this kid? They, they asked the GC, can we take this kid? And, and ask him if he can become an electrician. Because at the job, at the time, I was working for the general contractor through a labor source. So the, the lady who was a general contractor knew me really, really well. Um, and she said, sure, take him. You know, it's going to suck because he shows up every day for me. But they're about to have a baby. His family is about to have a baby. Take him and, and further his education. So I started on the commercial sites. And as that went through a couple months, I really couldn't be... I, I had the mentality of always go, go, go. I didn't have the mentality of really arguing. I, I wasn't structured that way. So when I was on the job site and someone said, hey, Jay, go grab that uh, that, that wire stretcher, I was in the freaking trailer looking for a wire stretcher. There's no such thing as a wire stretcher. We all know that. That's a that's a 101 <sighs> on the job, you know, a <laughs> prank, man. That was it. And I fell for it. So. Anyways, I just didn't have that in me. Well, as I would go in the trade and, and, and move up six six months to nine months to a year, I would start seeing other individuals get a little outspoken, you know, and they would they would the commercial side of it when I was coming up, it was it was beat, beat, beat you down, beat, beat, beat you down. And that's all you would get um, when you came mm-hmm. in. But again, I, I really didn't care, man. To me, I didn't. You could talk the poo you wanted to. I, I was getting paid a lot more than what I was at the labor site. So. Um, just coming into the trade, I, I had that mentality and, and, um, again, I, I think as I got through my first year, which probably a lot of these, um, listeners, um, have experienced too with, with, um, new guys is, is they put on that, that happy face. Well, after a year in, I was kind of getting tired of getting beat, beat down all the time. So I would, I would kind of speak back out at times. And, and again, I guess. Sometimes, like you were saying, you can be a problem solver or a problem starter at the same time, and it can even happen mm-hmm. in the same day. So you got to be really careful yeah. on that. So I used that's kind of how I, came I used to in. do my. I used to do transformers, and I would tell my helper to go to the truck and get my primary to secondary regulator. <laughs> and, and they would say, "What?" And I'd say, "Well, I'm we're putting in this transformer, so I've got to. I, I, I need to get my. I need you to go pick up my primary to secondary regulator because I need to make sure that the primary and secondary." are regulated properly. It's in my truck. Just go get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go get it. <sighs> and then you're yelling at them. I, I, I swear. I'd where's come my back regulator? And... Come on. Yeah. Where's my primary? <laughs> secondary? There's no way this primary is going to work right with this secondary. If you don't get my primary to secondary regulator. 
So, anyway. Go find so, it. It's in the truck, bottom shelf on the left, man. Go man, get it. Right, and, what uh, do you mean you don't see it? It's right there. It's where I put it. But, yeah, I, I mean, you can be both. Um, I think that – I think the one that bothers me probably the most is when you're – and I see Eddie's in here as well. Welcome, Eddie. Yeah, happy hey, to be Eddie. an electrician. Very proud to be an electrician. Hey, you've heard me. People have heard me say this. I've been doing this for over 30-plus years. And there is no other, and I've been doing it, 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 you know, when I was a contractor and everything at, at, at a pretty good level. Um, I love this trade. I don't, I think this is the best trade out there. And for people oh, yeah. that are wanting to get in this trade and learn it, you, sky's the limit, dude. But if you come in early with a chip on your shoulder yeah. and you're nothing but a problem starter, when you're trying to absorb as much knowledge as you can, that's the worst. Yeah, if you're if you're the best out there, you're the you're the you're the the, the code cocky guy. You're the, you're that one that's the, you know, thinks you know it all. Then you're one of those guys that are soon going to fall because there's always somebody that comes along, right? Yeah. That type of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, piece of humble pie a lot of times. Um, yeah, but you know, when I was when I was coming into the to the trade and I was getting experience about my first year going into my second year and I had just completed my first year of schooling. So I was building confidence. Um, and again, I was just going to kind of touch on on where the, the little bit of commercial I did and I was starting to build confidence and I would catch myself coming in and just really given that attitude, you know, like yeah. I created it. I was hanging around the wrong guys on the job site. I was sure. hanging out with, with probably the group of guys that, um, at the time weren't the most liked maybe. And I didn't have again, much seniority. So I kind of just fell in where I, where I felt like I fit in. And, and sometimes it wasn't the right crowd to be in. Um, and, and I, I started talking back and I, uh, they ended up letting me go. You know, I, I showed up late two days in a row. I was 15 minutes late on a job. And, and they canned me. And that's kind of when I went back and I looked in the mirror and I said, man, I said, Jay, you, you didn't start this way. You know, why are you, what's going on with you? And, and again, I think it's just because I was, I was gaining confidence and I felt like, okay, I, I've taken your guys' um, constructive criticism for about a year, year and a half now. And now I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of done with it. When are you going to kind of build me up? And I think that's... Right. That's that's one great thing about companies and good leaders, they will build you up uh, sure. at times, and they they'll look they'll look a little further. So, um, and and like Honesdale says, he says I'm 56. I get green guys all day long. Mm -hmm. I teach, listen, and sometimes have to be dad to them. And <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? There's some people out there who say I ain't. I'm not doing that. It's fine. But. Oh, yeah. Me, I've not always kidding. been, I've always been, you know, if I've got something to teach, um, you know that. So, yeah, oh, <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> I said, I tell you, are you, are you lost? Me? He's trying to, he's still trying to look for his primary to secondary regulator. Yeah. So, um, luckily the last couple of apprentices are people training that did that. They gave me that look. So they must've had it. Somebody say something similar before. Damn, Jay, my oh, oh it's sore. Co Cosby's in the house. Look, hey, Cosby, look, how's it going? Oh look, man, look, look. Coach Strong. The the band -aid. <laughs> so we're on into my going from my first year to second year. I had to find another job, so I found another job, and um, I was I was a little more seasoned than uh, some few guys under me. So they gave me a position, like an actual like leader position, in a certain area. Again, it wasn't much, but at the time, it felt pretty good to have a little bit of a responsibility and that's when i actually kind of first um realized okay this this question you know are you going to be a problem starter or a problem solver because when you when when you're put in a leadership position and it can be even before when when, when you first come into the trade but when you do get that leadership position you, you take on a little more responsibility even though sometimes you don't get paid or or, or you didn't ask for the job Listen, man, take it as like a um, learning experience. Yeah, learn experience and like like a pat on the back because they're giving mm -hmm. you something. And some guys say, no, I don't want that. And I was I was eat, I was hungry for it. And so I got in that position and my, my guy, my crew, we'd stretch and flex in the morning. We tr try to come up with a game plan. And I was always always trying to be open to their suggestions. And I think I think that's one thing 
for problem uh, starters um, is they don't is, is they don't want to give the information out to to the guys below them right. because they want to have that control. Well, they you know feel like I mean? that you know they control the knowledge, and that's been a that's been yeah. sign of a problem in our trade for years. Um, you know, because if actively, depending on what forum you go on, man, you can go on in, in uh, different forums and post something and somebody says, well, it's not my job to teach somebody. Okay. Hey, I get it. I get it. But, you know, that's what, you know, I, I like to think that's what our trade's about is that I can share something. If we're that insecure that somebody else is going to come along and take our job or something like that, I, I don't know if that's the reason or not, or they just don't want to share information. Me, um, I, I'm... You know, it's one of those things where you, I get a lot of pride out of helping people succeed. That's just me. So when you get your license, I'm as excited as you are when somebody sends me that email or that text and says, hey, I used your program or I used your videos or I used something to get my license. I love it. Don't think people that send me those, don't think I don't appreciate it because I love getting it. I love hearing somebody excited about achieving and, and, and what the, what they can, what's the next level they can go to. Uh, in their career, if this is their chosen career they want to be in. And the beautiful thing about this trade is that, I mean, God, you can what, be a service guy, gal. You can be just, a, you know, technician. You can be a specialist. For, you, can, you can be the electrical specialist for an HVAC company where you're not even doing HVAC, but you're the electrical person they come to. You could be, uh, you know, electrical knowledge. I mean, even if you had a, you know, you're retired, Let's say, and you've you amassed all this knowledge as an electrical an electrician, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's in the electrical department. Hey, helping people because the DIYers are going to do it, whether we like it or not, they're going to do it. And you can give them valuable information so they can maybe do it right and not electrocute themselves or something like that. And but I, I think some of those Home Depot employees are problem starters, man. Some of them. <laughs> I've heard of, and I don't mean that in, in, as far as what they're how they're talking to the customer. I'm talking about the advice that they're giving to the customer and sending him home to go install it. That yeah. Way. Yeah. Well, we're always going to have, we're going to always, always going to have that, that problem, but um, yeah, for sure. But at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's tons of, you know, everybody becomes a YouTube expert. So they watch the YouTube and, and, and learn how to be an expert on this and that and, and, and things like that. Yeah. But yeah, and he's right. I don't know how many times you go into the Home Depots and Lowe's, you, you never can find anybody. They got the little buttons to help out because again, <laughs> they, they know where to be found, but I guess they're just shorthanded. But did you see where Home Depot actually set records during COVID? Uh, money records. Oh, sure. Just crazy amount of money that company makes. Uh, you know, the DIYers. And, you know, again, as a contractor, I used to get supplies from them time to time, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever, because I could get better deals, uh, you know, just than I could at the supply house. I know they used to get upset and say, you need to support your local supply house. But I'm like, dude, I'm trying to make a living here. And if I can buy a disconnect for, you know, a third or even a half of what you're going to charge me because I don't buy the volume from you that would give me these special discounts, then I got to buy from a Lowe's or Home Depot. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, well, and, and, it, and they're open on Saturday and Sunday as well, where yeah. a lot of supply houses might be open maybe until noon on a Saturday. And and they're not delivering anything. So, you know, Home Depot's always always been open. The, the issue now is just trying to get the product to stay on the shelf. I can't find a single gang remodel to save my life right now. So... Yeah, it's getting tough. I have heard some from friends in, in, in the networks that I communicate with that they're having pro trouble getting some supplies. Some electrical stuff yeah. is just getting hard to get. If not, they're also getting, you know, being priced yeah, pretty high. Estrada, thank you. Appreciate you joining us. Hopefully you're watching our videos, listening to our podcasts and everything over on our channel and enjoying that as well. Uh, we have other yeah, episodes of Electrician Live over on electricianlive.com. Make sure you check those out. Definitely. Yeah, Eddie says I like to help people because most are scared of electricity, and that's that's even, mm -hmm. and, and that's and and even if it's not a problem, that's that's being a solver in in the way that you're solving someone's fear, or you're conquering um, mm -hmm. some kind of of roadblock in their way by by giving them the knowledge and sitting down and talking it through with them, or even showing them. I was telling um, our crew leads the other day that. You know, with these newer guys, I, I know you guys like to sit there and watch them struggle a little bit, 
Uh, and that's fine. Let them struggle, right? Get, put them on yeah, the we struggle We can tease bus. them a little bit. I mean, we're okay. We can tease you. We can tease you a little bit, but it's all in tease fairness. Them a little bit, you know. But at the end of the day, if if you know a way that's quicker, faster, and more productive, then then as a owner, and I put you in that position, you should take that time and oh, yeah. show these guys that way. And absolutely. And that's and that's what I think we're losing, and not in just my company. And I'm not putting any of my guys down. It's just again with the newer. Younger guys, I say newer, younger guys, even like my son, he's 14 and a half, and I, I can already see him putting on that tool bag and saddling up, as as we would call it, although a bunch of my electricians are damn darn pocket electricians, it seems like. i going up and down the ladder, I've, up and down, up and down, up I'm and down. I'm not going to make any comment <laughs> on that because... <laughs> you know are you the master are you papa daddy no. pocket electrician man? dude i've been doing this long enough if i go into a job i know what tools i need to put in my pocket so okay but i, I have a little mini pouch and it'll have yeah. my side cutters in it two different types or my eight and one or something in it and you know i have you know um wire strippers and things like that. so I, I mean i have the basic stuff that i need and i kind of have an idea of the project that i'm uh, you know, I'm dealing with. Uh, ironically, though, when I go into a house call, or I guess when I used to do that quite a bit, uh, I would actually carry my bag in with everything. You know, all of my tools oh, in in a bag, the drill and everything like the fanny pack. No, I didn't go on a, I didn't go up my ladder <laughs> with a fanny pack, Eddie. So, <laughs> although we do have fanny packs available over on electricianpride.com, right. if you would like a fanny pack with code cocky on the front of it go to electricianpride.com and you can get a fanny pack but if no it would fit my meter I, yeah and uh but i'd have my yeah i'd have my meter uh in uh all of that you know just so i'm you know i'm ready i don't want to make trips out to the truck i think you know things like that but did, did you ever use the bucket buddy you know that's the one with the bucket and the thing that wraps over it and around it never never did um never used it, never used it. um you know Never, never used it. It's a pretty neat looking idea, but I, and, you know, never, never did it. I have a, I had a bag with the wheel pull and I had that for years and inside of it has my tool bag, my belt, leather belt, but also extra tools that I need in the compartments and everything and my meter and everything like that. And my drill and everything. My, my, you ready to tease me? You ready? My Ryobi's because everybody <laughs> says that's not a pro level. Worked fine. For some reason, it's still torqued out just as well as any of them. But anyway, I know we, we're again with the Milwaukee guys out there of whatever. Hold on. Uh-oh, he's disappeared. Oh, and, oh sorry. Got it. Got it. Boom, baby. I love that. They do, not, they do not sponsor the show, by the way. But no. our sponsor <laughs> is <laughs> CBD Pure. If you need to get your CBD on. Go to our website, masterthenec.com, and there's a banner on there. Click on it and choose the ointment. I need some of the cream right now because I got a sore arm, Jay. That's right. I, I heard they, they sell that senior cream for you too, so. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Anyway, segue so, away from uh, that. So problem starter, problem solver. So I kinda, we kind of yeah. beat that to death, but – at well, I, got, I have a situation that I want to I want to bring oh, okay. up before we go into something else. And and okay. I was I was on a job once, and and I was a, I was a journeyman for I believe it was I've worked for so many companies I forget if it was Wayne's Electric or or one of the bigger outfits. You, and, look, you're, um, not, you're not supposed to name drop on the show, okay? Oh, sorry. I I I've worked for a larger company, and and again, sometimes you are just a number to these guys you're just a body you're just a helper i don't want to say just number because you're getting stuff done so they and they are paying you good money for it and and i'm, I'm in a, a journeyman um leadership role and and i have a really really good helper a really good helper and he's he's not showing up to work he, he was showing up to work for about six months and he was really good he was he was always asking he's even bringing in my tools from the van that's how good of an apprentice. Do you was. have a helper or do you have a minion? Because I mean, you know, you can bring in your own tools, Jay. Come on now. No, no, he was he was a good he was a good helper. He'd bring in he'd bring in my tools and <laughs> and and as I was getting everything laid out for the guys, he would he would help get the material to them and just a really good hand for being six months and 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 he you could tell there towards the end of that six months he was he was frustrated, he was upset, he would come in and he would he, he just wasn't acting the same and he would he'd call in and 
my boss said, Jay, I'm going to have to get rid of, you know, Sean. And I said, no, no, let me, let me talk to him. You know, I said, let, let me just talk to him real quick. And so I, I was able to meet up with him outside of work. I got his phone number and I met up with him outside of work, said I'd buy him dinner or whatever, lunch. And we sat down on a weekend and we just went over what his issue was. And, and I guess he, he just recently had a death in the family. His, his, his mother just passed away. And, and yeah, was, that, that, I'm, let me, I'll let you finish your story, Yeah, but I will say something about that. I think many times in our companies, you know, they don't take those things into account. Then when somebody's doing really well, then all of a sudden there's a pattern change in how they do or their attitude or something's you can tell, right? You could tell you can, I think less companies and less supervisors get involved like that and they should. Because you saw something that wasn't the norm and everybody's got something going on. Everybody's issues think that they're the only issue in the world and everybody else has got issues as well. And so you were able to identify this and that's awesome because I've been in situations where I work for the municipalities and they don't get involved in their employees, but we all work together. You can see when somebody's something, something's bothering, but they don't want to, they don't want to bring air their laundry at work. Right. But you can tell. And sometimes, you know what? I know there's people out there that say, I mean, like Elwood says, but I mean, some people take it different and they go, dude, we all got our issues. You worry about yours. I worry about mine. Sometimes it's okay for me to go, oh, crap, I've got an issue. Like with my mom passed away. But if I noticed somebody else was hurting, I'm going to put my issue on the burner because if I can relieve and help relieve your issue, and make you feel better, then I'll go back to working on my issue. Because mine's not going away. It's not going away, right? And I think too many times we don't open up and want to help other people with their issues, especially if you notice somebody struggling. That's why we have a sudden increase of suicides and, you know, post-traumatic stress and all this kind of... We're not willing to listen anymore. And everybody's afraid to open up. I mean, you were opening up early on, you know, and, and then, you, you know, the other J... Just shut you down. No, I'm just playing. But <laughs> at the end of the day, just having some having somebody that's willing to listen. I mean, that's what this trade's all about. Too many people forget that. And then I'll get the thumbs down for people saying, oh, I'm a code. You know, I did that. I did that. I'll let you get back to your thing. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I didn't mean to jump on you. But I did this thing about women. And I had people that thumbs down that. Because I said women in the trade, women should have a right. They have saying, you know, there's some people out there that want to beat their yeah. chest so... I don't get it. I just, I don't get it anymore. You know why you've got to, anyway, go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. So, uh, so we were, I took him out that weekend for lunch and just kind of took a minute to get him to open, open up a little bit, but, but he did. And again, he just lost his mom. I think, um, another family member was getting into some drugs and stuff that, that he used to get into. And I, and I don't know, maybe I think he was kind of getting into that, roll again just to relieve that um anger from losing his his mom yeah, so he kind of went it, down it's, it's an easy escape right it's it's easy drinking, when you're young drinking doing drugs whatever is an easy escape takes your mind off of your issues instead of tackling the issues you're going to hide yourself in that i get it people do it uh but uh you know a good supervisor or a good employer can see these things if they stay connected with their people yeah. sometimes your company gets so big you lose connection with your people but um, that's when you need to hire somebody that can stay connected with your people because keep the people happy. Yeah. Keeps the company happy. Right. Yeah. Keep and you can, you can see guys that are, that are in the trade that just need that little guidance. You know, when, when I was coming up, uh, I had a few guys in the company that, that knew I came from the labor background to the company I was hired on with. So they kind of took me under their wing and my journeyman had, he gave me his residential pouch. He had two pouches. He had his commercial pouch and then he had his side job pouch. And he, they were leathers, man. I mean, these were some nice pouches. And he said, hey, Jay, until you get until you get your tools, why don't you use these pouch? Well, every two weeks that I got paid, I'd put, you know, 50 bucks aside, 50 bucks aside, 50 right. bucks aside. And I grabbed one of those guys. I said, hey, man, can you can you take me to the supply house so we can go get some tools, man? And, and, well, and my so tools I was kinda, now. I was, I was like, I don't want to wear your tools anymore. I want my own. So uh, I got the knockoff kind and, and everything like that until I could afford it. But it was just nice to, to, to look back now and, and look at those guys who, who gave back. And that gives me the encouragement to kind of give back as well. And, and I think 
nowadays, if, if I'm a if I'm a problem starter, it's most likely with a general contractor <laughs> or a PM that I'm having issues right. with. I don't really do much homeowner work, but uh, I'm always defending my guys. And and yeah. again, I know how tough it is in the trade, whether it's residential, commercial, industrial. It's hard to get up and go to work, man. So it's it's easy to it's easy to be in that crappy mood. It's easy to come to work and be that downer that that just rags on how, like you were saying, how all his issues in life or her issues in life suck and how they can never get back. I think that was probably my worst was just hearing people moan and complain and you know what all day long instead of actually listening to the knowledge that they could soak in, you know? I, yeah, I think one of the biggest things that I struggle with is that we also have to remember on jobs and different things that not everybody wants to hear your your problem. Yeah. Right. So I'm this, I'm there, me and you're on a job site and you're having a bad day and you're gri griping and moaning and groaning and, and, and about everything. I'm just here to work. I didn't come in in the morning to hear your, to hear you griping and moaning and groaning. Um, and I'm going to be less apt to want to have anything to do with your issue when you're barking and nasty, whatever. However, if I'm used to your every day and you're come to work and one day you're just, you just look, you know, you're quiet. You're just, you look down. I am more apt to say at lunch break or something. I didn't say, okay, got anything going on you want to talk about, right? And be genuine about it. Whereas if you're there barking and, and moaning and groaning and complaining and just, you know, I don't know why the boss wants me to do this and because he's the boss. Hello? Okay. You're getting paid an hourly rate. Just do it. Okay. I know people all the time that do something and then they do it and they have to pull it back out and they end up yelling at the boss or forming like, I just did this. And I'm sitting there thinking, why are you moaning and groaning? You got paid how many hours to put that in? And now they're telling you for some other reason to pull it out and then put it in again. Hey, hello. You're going to get paid to do it again. Hello. It's okay. Yeah, I never understood that. I, I, I got guys I mean, that do the work for a homeowner, for example, and then something in, in the homeowner changes their mind. And they're like, they come stomping to the truck. Yeah. God, that's stupid. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, you know, they're the one paying. And if I look at them and say, well, you know, this is what we agreed to, but you want me to do something else? No problem. You do know it's going to cost more, right? That might change the owner's tune, the homeowner's tune, but you're getting paid to do a job, right? Just do it. Just do it. Just do I mean, the job. just do the job. But yeah, I think I would be more apt to, to notice when somebody that I'm used to working with, especially in a relationship like you with a helper or me with, you know, a helper with a supervisor or somebody to know when something's just not right. And I'm not going to be a problem starter there. I'm going to be a problem solver. I'm going to be an ear to listen. And not everybody can do that. I get it. Some people don't want that baggage. I get it. And you don't have it. Yeah. You don't need it. That's fine. But there are people that are willing to take that again. But again, that kind of just translate off of our problem starter to the most extreme would be somebody that does nothing but cause problems. Just goes out of their way to make the job site miserable, make everybody miserable, complain and moan and groan about everything because their world is upside down personally that they want to bring it to work. I don't kind of don't like that. Um, yeah. Don't don't bring that on the site. You don't need to drag everybody else down because of it. Um, and I get it, but uh, that's not a way to get any sympathy when you start being, when you're an a hole on the job and you're a starter. I really you know, so. I really think that when when we get into those those leadership roles, we have that choice because if, if if you're a real young guy and you're into the trade, let's say you and I hired you, and I could tell within the three months that you're a problem starter, I'll, I'll get rid of you. You know what I mean? I'll talk to you and sit down and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Is that your probation period? Is that probably why some people give probation periods? You know, a lot of companies will do a one-year yeah. probation. So the, the Cinderella period will end usually <laughs> yeah. for people after a couple months. They feel comfortable. I found that with people. After a couple months, they, you know, they start off, they're really good. And everything that after they get about three or four months in them, three, you know, they're, they're, they'll start – sniping back at you or saying something smart or doing something or not following directions or doing something, that's when the Cinderella time is starting to end. And that's where a good supervisor will start at that point, really evaluating them saying, okay, that first couple of months, that's just, that's just us getting acquainted. 
Now you either feel too comfortable with me or you're pushing our authority to the point where now you're a problem starter. And look, I'm not interested in problem starters. I'm interested in problem solvers. Oh, um, and which one are you going to be? So a lot of people, that's, you know, I know municipalities, that's what we would give a one year probation. And that was because after about three or four months, we got to see the real person because they get confident yeah. and they think that I'm, I'm, I'm irreplaceable. No, everybody's replaceable, dude. Everybody. So everybody. So at that point, you know, and the only way to get around that is you to become the owner and trust me, you're still replaceable. If you are a pain in the butt to a customer or, or, or one of your clients or one of your contractors, I can guarantee you, Jay is not going to be a problem starter to one of his very top suppliers of work for one of his contractors. Okay. The ones that give him the money, the ones that give him the work. Okay. Probably not going to be a problem starter for that. If they have an issue, I think Jay's probably going to be a problem solver because, you know, you want to come out smelling like a rose. You want to look like I'm doing something for you and, and yeah. you know, and you know, you scratch my back, I scratch your back, and I was here when you needed me, and yada yada yada. So, Eddie, yeah, if you can beat Johnny on the spot, you're you're Eddie you're says, you're doing something right. Eddie says, "Bring donuts to the boss." Does that always work, Eddie? Yeah, I guess so. Bring, yeah. That's because Eddie's the boss, so he's that's like, "Hey, he's bring Eddie me donuts." Boss, he's like, "Bring me donuts." And yeah, bring me donuts. All. I don't and, know. And see, a, I good, would, a good, I would bring donuts to my guys. A good set of donuts does solve a lot of things, I think. Yes, good donuts, burritos, breakfast burritos, um, yeah. even soup, McDonald's dollar muffins. I know they're not the best to get going, but the guys love that greasy food. They love to scarf it down in the morning, Sorry. and you know, because we're, we're electricians. We we sleep in, we we leave late, we show up early. So I don't oh, know. Yeah. We do it all. Oh, yeah. But just just to your point, the the contractor that I use for basements, I just want to tell you, what's what are we in March? Is this is March? Yes. We're in March. March. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. I do. I, I've in the in the month of March, I have fifteen basements with just this one company, and I am the as far as seniority goes, I'm the third lowest. I am the top electrician as far as seniority, meaning I came in after the other two and i just think i just think the other two like like you just oh they they they, they they had people above you and then they get complacent and they bark back and not flexible enough to schedule changes and they think that nobody can yeah. wire this better than us and then the company the, the 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 contractor goes dude i've had it with your attitude you're out of here that you are problem you're up. a problem starter trust me those contractors like that have so many things going on, whether it's the plumbing, mechanical, building, everybody, they don't need problem starters. They need contractors that are going to be problem solvers. And you came that's in, right. solve that problem. That's the way you do it. Always wait for somebody. I used to tell people all the time, just wait. Somebody will rotate out. If, it have, if you go to somebody and they say, hey, I'd like to give you my card. Um, if you ever need any electrical work. And they go, well, I've got somebody. I'm like, well, I'm just saying you ever need somebody to help you i just want you to know that i'm not a problem starter i'm a problem solver that's right. That that's would be, right that's dude, that's good that'd be good right go to a guy you're trying to get some work from and say look i know you don't use me i know that i'm probably not the one that you pick right now uh, but i'm interested in doing your work and i'm gonna tell you what i take a lot of pride in what i do and i'm a problem solver i'm not a problem starter think right. about that Give him that card and walk out to Chester. Uh, yeah. Oh, damn. Next thing you know, he's going to call you up for some financial support. <laughs> hey, man, yeah. how, do I, how do I solve this $20,000 debt I have with <laughs> Sally Mae that's been lingering for the last uh, 30 years? I don't know. You don't use me. So, you know, right, but, right. Yeah. <laughs> but if you did, no. you know. I, I, I think you're right, and, and they, the, the contractor that I work for, they still keep the other two electricians around. They cover a, a certain area, but I think that they, when it's a quick turnaround, like a fast start, they don't even they don't even call me anymore. They used to call me last year. Deborah from Elkstone would call me. She said, Jay, can you take on this job? Said, yeah, of course. Can you take on this job? Yeah. After a while of saying yes every time, they don't even ask anymore. It just shows up in your email, and you're just like, another one. And it's like, owners geez. Yeah, but the owners, uh, owners out there never get complacent. 
Because again, you're always replaceable. Okay. There's always, a, there's always another contractor just waiting to get that work and they're hungry and they want it. So, you know, don't, don't lose that. The, the fact that you, you've got to always stay hungry. You always have to stay on your game in this profession. Cause again, a lot of electrical contractors out there. And again, I want everybody to succeed, but if you've got hold of a good contractor, take care of them. Uh, now that doesn't mean that you give them the farm. Okay. That's, that's, that's not what we're saying. Okay. That doesn't mean like, Oh, we've been so good. They ask you to put in another 10 recess lights and you're like, ah, just eat that. No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. They're saying always be attentive to what they want. Be very responsive. Don't let emails linger, answer their questions right away. Give them answers quickly. Don't make, don't give it time to fester. Don't create problems. Try to be a solution person and all this kind of thing. But I'm not saying give away everything to, to try to keep them because they will take advantage of that. And that's not what yeah. you're trying to do. You're trying to foster a mutual respecting relationship, not somebody like, well, let's get, let's get Jay to do it because, you know, last time Jay put a bunch of those lights in, you know, if we got a problem, he'll eat it. No, 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 no. I ain't eating nothing. No. Okay, except for those donuts that Eddie's bringing me. That's but right, Eddie. That, bring the donuts. Yeah. Other than that, and I like the Krispy Kreme, by the way. It's just so you know. Yeah, I mean, I won't, same, I won't, same. I won't turn down a Dunkin' Donut, but I'm just saying, I'm a, I'm a Krispy Kreme kind of guy. I like it. So anyway. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Hone is the same way. It says ten lights, but that's not the same price we paid last year. I, you know, and how do you respond to that? I've had that happen, but in the past, they're like, well, "Wait a minute, last time you did this," and I'm like. Everything goes up. Things change. Labor rates change, right? Um, yeah. Costs change. Living cost of livings change. My wages to my guys change. Everything changes. I'm doing my best for you here. I'm trying to be very fair. And if you talk to somebody like that, I also noted a couple of times, Jay, that it's all about the tone. If you're going to sure. raise the price or have an increased price or something, if you go in as a tone and say, "Man, I'm working for you here." This is the this is the best I can do. I'm, I'm really, you know, you know, I'm fair. I'm always fair to you. But this is, you know, this is what you know. Prices have gone up. You know, I'm having, you know, this is what this is just what it is now. I guess they can either accept it or not. You know, but if but I'll be honest with you. In your case, hey, uh, Hone, if if I did that and, and my contractor came back to me and started giving me a bunch of lip about a price increase from last year, ten years, and they don't think about the fact that copper goes up, the uh, Raw materials goes up, things go up, and I can tell you copper has gone up and down uh, dramatically. Try yeah. to go buy some NMB right now. Many places, if they don't have it, it's two and three weeks wait. So we can get whatever price meet we want because of the demand. So that's why the price of the wire goes up. I mean, because it's, it's a supply and demand. If the price goes up and other people can't produce it and our company can, we're going to raise the price. Okay? It's all about profit. I, it is. We don't care about your personal need. It's, it's how much money we can make. And it, it's just, it is what it is. Okay. So you're right. So all these prices go up. But if I get a bunch of grief from a contractor, and I, I don't know your situation, Jay, how this, how'd you react to this? You let me know. But if you had one of your guys came to you and started giving you crap about adding extra lights and the price went up, and that's not what I paid last year, I'd say, well, this is, you know, I found that keeping it short and simple, and that's tough for me, is, is the best solution saying, look, Prices have gone up. I'm doing the best I can. It is what it is. The more you talk to them about it, the more you get into the, oh, this is why, this is why. Cut it off. Nip it. Cut that thing off at the cord. You know what I'm saying? Just say, I understand. Prices were different a little then. Things have changed. Time's gone up. Look at the economy. It's up and down. I always reevaluate my prices. This is what it is. I'm very fair to you, and I'm going to continue to be fair to you. But this is it. This is what it is. And then end the conversation. But I have seen people that do this and they get so amped up that it's almost like they're yelling at them yeah. because they're offended that you think my price is higher. And, and I start getting <gasps> and me, I, that would turn, turn me off as a contractor. <laughs> yeah, it would turn me off as a contractor. Get used to practicing this and, and saying, yeah. Look, I'm sorry you think it's higher. It probably is a little higher than it was last year. I don't keep track on it because everything is current. I base my prices on what the cost is of things and the labor and everything I have. 
this is what it is, and I'm doing my best to be fair. Trust me, the margin part is probably still the same. It's just the cost have gone up. I'm doing the best I can with it, and that's what it has to be. And then in that conversation, and just go on to something else. Change the subject, but do it even keeled. Don't get amped up. And I have seen people get amped up like you're. I'm offended that you question my price. You can be offended if you want, but you're going to win more of those battles by just coming, practicing a level-headed response and just saying, you know, like what I said, you know, I understand and, and, and I get it. Prices have changed. Things have changed. Costs have changed. My margins have stayed the same. I'm just trying to, to pass forward with you, to you what my costs are and, and it is what it is and it's the best I can do for you. I, and again, I appreciate you and being fair about it. And move on, that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, yeah, I I think for 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 wired up when when we knew the code was coming out for the 2020, and that the most states were, or cities were going to adopt it in August of 2020. In let's say I went back three months, so I think it was like July or June or something like that. So I was starting to send out letters saying, "Hey, and on August 1st." my two 20 volt circuits are going to go from, you know, maybe 250 to 350. So there's going to be an increase there. Oh, you are, my, proact you are proactive on your cost. I was already, I was already seeing it because again, the, the last thing you want to do is go to someone and, and like you say that the prices are, are, aren't what they were last year. Well, first of all, you should have known what the job you're going to do and then send them a, a, a pre bid anyways, if you can. And, and one thing I've learned with, with working with general contractors and, and project managers are you need to, give them the price and the change order up front and have it approved before you do the work. Cause once you do the work and, and there's no, there's no paper trail of it or there's nothing on the general contractors end going, Hey, I have approved that. Even if the work has to get done, even if you have to, the, the plans don't show the smoke alarm in the bedroom, you know, per code, you have to charge it. I'm sending that to that, to, to the contractor right away. Sure. Even if it's 35 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Cause I don't want to eat that. Now, no. if, if one of my guys did it and, and there was no communication, I would say, hey, man, listen, if that's the case, I will eat this one. You know, and, and I've done that a few sure. times, but I get tired of eating them, man. And so I, We're I, in business to make money, right? I'm not in business yeah. to give it away. Um, you know, I, I get that all the time for my courses as well, by the way, because I do a lot of free stuff on YouTube <laughs> and do a lot of training. Everybody's like, well, I don't want to buy a course. And I'm like. This is what I do. For, this is one of the things I do. I can't give you everything. Okay. I mean, I got to make a living. That's, that's how, that's how what the economy works. That's how this whole thing works. You know, capitalism, it works. So, um, yeah. You, so you, you do your best to help, but in your case, yeah, there's no way you're going to eat that. Now, Eddie asked, could we charge? Uh, interesting enough, Eddie, back in the day, um, when I was in Virginia, a lot of it was time and material. But I bid an awful lot of jobs, and I think we've talked about this in other shows. I was a big Conest guy back then, so everything that I did, even residential, it didn't matter. Everything was bid. Now, back when I worked with my brother, it wasn't that way. We kind of, you know, Todd would, he would take care of the pricing because he had been doing that. He's very familiar with that. I was code-driven, and I was doing the work. Um, but, um, you know, he would, you know, he would give estimates out and things like that. Now, today... The, the work that I do now, I only, just for me in Texas right now, and very limited work, by the way, um, is residential only. I don't do commercial anymore. Uh, but now I do everything by task because it has to do with taxes in Texas. Um, you can't do residential work and you can't, you can't do per hour and not have to pay taxes. But what you can do, so hourly rate, so in order to get away from around that, which is legal in Texas under residential work, you have to do it by task, right? So instead of saying, I will do the, I'll give you an hourly rate of 85 an hour plus material, I would have to charge taxes on, on the, and every, the material. So what we do in, in, in it's legal in the state of Texas is we do it for residential anyway. Now commercial, you still have to do it. You have to pay the taxes on your material. But when it comes to the, the residential, it's just by task. So if I think something will take an hour, then I'm going to give you a price and I'm a material and supplies. I'm going to include everything in the price, right? So I'm going to say $125. That includes my 85 an hour plus the other 
things. So again, that's how we do it. Now, if you're not doing that in Texas, just be careful because there are laws about that when it comes to paying your taxes, when it comes to the material you buy. We incorporate it into the actual task and you can get around some things. I'm not a tax accountant and I'm not telling you how to do your taxes. Um, but Texas doesn't allow you even residential wise to charge by the hour and not have to pay taxes on sales tax on the products. We already buy that stuff. So we pay sales tax, but there's just the way you do it in Texas. And I don't want to get too deep into it, but residentially wise, you're better off doing it by the task and not by the hour. I'm just saying commercial, totally different thing, but I don't do commercial any at all. Um, yeah, and so some people do per square footage. I, I try to stay away from that. I do per opening. I have a set price for every. Oh, yeah. And, so you do you know, the, electrical per device, for, 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 for outlet box. I mean, you, you do per opening. Yep. Well, I do. Yeah. And, and the thing I started incorporating, too, was was breaker costs. So on my breakdown, I might have, let's say, two bedrooms, right? So let's just say 10 outlets, five in each. So and then lighting. So I'll have 10 receptacles two switches, two lights, two arc faults, and I'll put a price for that arc fault. And that will cover the breaker itself and running that home run. And then from there, every every other opening is, is, is accounted for. And, and I wasn't charging for that arc fault for a while. And I didn't have that in there. So I was losing. I was kind of losing that price into the per opening. So it was, again, it, as, as you grow, I know it. Don't lose money. Don't lose money, man. Don't lose it. And so that's just kind of the way I, now, I've done it. And now on my other service jobs, work, I'll do, and My yeah. service work, I did everything back in Virginia. I did everything the last couple of years. I did everything with flat rate pricing. And I was a big oh. believer in flat rate because I had my books with the flat rate pricing. So when I would show the customer, they'd have options. What do you want? This, this, this. And, oh, this is a category one, that box, that ceiling box. You want a ceiling fan, but guess what? If you had a ceiling fan box, it was category one. You don't. So now I have to put a ceiling fan box in it. The additional labor, that's category two. Here are the prices. There's no haggling. It's right there, black and white. You get the job done, and you have the best profit margin by doing flat rate pricing. Um, but that was back when I was in 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 Virginia when I was doing a lot more service service type of work is flat. We all did our guys all did flat rate because that way I could have a book together with all of our costs in the book with some difficulty variances to it. So easy, difficult things like that so that they could add a buffer onto it. If they were to look at a job and say, wow, this is, they want to got to fish something from here to there. We don't know what we're going to get into. So there was a variable for that as well or something like that. But that's, it's been years since I've done that method, but that worked great for me was a flat rate method as well. So we might have to do a show one night on flat rate pricing because that is the way to go if you're service folks and that's what you want to do. Definitely. Yeah, Were you talking? Did I interrupt you again? I'm sorry, Jay. No, you were talking no, about service, something. service is great, man. I, I love service work. I like to do the T&M on, on service work. Um, so the finality at, is so great all. with that. You get in, you get out, you get it, you get it done. Bada bing, bada bang. You, boop, boop, boop. I like get finality. Get paid that day. Get paid that day. That money. You're in and out. Three I, I had a guy day. on Friday knock out four service calls for me. That's what he I'm brought in. About. He brought in, a, I think, a thousand bucks for the company. One guy. There you go. In eight hour go. days. Well, maybe it was nine because he, he had a four o'clock. But again, I mean, that's th those are the that's where kind of sometimes you want to dabble into the service. But again, then you're put you service. You have to be Johnny on the spot, man. I mean, if someone calls you and is like, hey, and you got to be well equipped. Isn't working, you have to I'm be, going. Your trucks have to be pretty. You know, in order to rank the optimum amount of money in the service, you need to have a, a, a very well stocked vehicle. Yeah. Otherwise, you're making these trips. Now, of course, I will tell people when I go to a service, I do very little because people say, Eddie says, all the videos and everything I do and where I do, I don't, I don't, people say, Paul, you don't, I don't know where you get all the time. That's because I have to manage my time. I actually, if you saw my phone, you will see that my schedule is managed out. I have blocks of time to do this and that so that I complete tasks. I learned that years ago. I had to manage. That's why I created the Fast Tracks course because it basically teaches you from unit one. I I had to block my time out to make sure I get it. If I want to do a video or a podcast, I literally have to block my yep. time out and make sure I'm going to do it. Okay. I got to go to the bathroom. I got to block my time. No, I don't do that. But you know what I mean? I, I keep it very regimented to do what I need to do. 
uh, in order to be able to, to get things completed, you know. So uh, at, the, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all about trying to, 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 to schedule things out in order to be efficient for all the things that, that, that you do, you know. So, and I think I have something I was talking about, but then I got, I went on my little efficiency thing to get, to get things Eddie- done. Eddie said, didn't know you did service, Jay. And um, yeah, I do service, man. Actually, I'm probably, I probably do the most service calls for the company, man. And uh, it's because we're booked out with basements and, and remodels and stuff. So when I get a service call, if I don't have anybody close by that, I can just pull off a project and have them go knock it out. I'll go knock it out, man, because now I'm making a minimum of $165. And, and how that works is $100 for the trip charge and $65 an hour. If I don't use any material, and I can get it done within that hour, even if it's just a reset. An hour. He's breaker. cheap. Wow. He, yeah. Jay's, I, I mean, Jay's that's affordable. Pretty... He's affordable. Let's say it that way. Jay's affordable. Got to like that. You know that. what? Affordable. You know what's nice is if I go out there, travel thirty minutes, get it done within an hour, travel back within two hours, I've made a minimum of one sixty-five, and that's not bad with with other projects going on. So sure. And I'm probably the most skilled troubleshooter in the company just because I've kind of done a little bit of it all my project manager chris is really good as well with residential um but i can also do commercial service calls i'm, I'm I, licensed there too interesting so. in, interesting enough that uh, hone brings up a an interesting point I, there's one thing that i learned early on for anybody that's new in this business or learning is don't be afraid to ask the customer questions. Everybody wants to think that if I ask a customer something that, that maybe I come across as I'm not knowledgeable and you're not hiring a knowledgeable person, if that's how they feel, then I just assume not go to their call. What I do is I yeah. ask tons of questions when I go on a service call. Somebody, I said, what do you need done? And like, for example, your example was a ceiling fan hung. Find out that it's 26 feet up high in the vault ceiling. That's oh, the kind of goodness. stuff that I ask, right? It's just, I'm used to it. Now, again, I will say, I will say, okay, yeah, I need a ceiling fan hung. Okay, where is it at? Okay, do you have the fan? No, I, you know, do we have to pick the fan out or what? I'm hoping you have the fan. Thing like, what's there now? Okay, those type of things. It's just, you know, it's just a, a normal light fixture there, a luminaire. Okay, maybe it's one of the surface ones or something. Okay, then I'll say, okay, um, they'll say, what's the height of the ceiling? Okay, is it over yeah. steps? Is it in a foyer? Or is it, you know? Just looking at it is a, is a is situation that I'm going to need certain ladders and certain types of things to get to it. Cause got to know because, again, they don't need to know, but you can say, well, you know, I have, ulti- I have multiple trucks or, have, you know, this type of thing. What do you need need done? Is it is it a 48-inch fan, a 52? And they say, well, I don't know. Well, it's on the box, right? Yeah. So you could look the <laughs> box. Picture of the box. I'm not just saying, you know, and I, and I kind of say, look, I, I just want to make sure that, one, where we have what we need to get the job done for you. So that you're happy, I'm happy, but two, so that I can kind of give you an idea of what, what's uh, what's going to be involved in it. You know, it's a ceiling fan. It's in the bedroom. I'm like, okay, it's just a regular light. I said, well, there's a chance that that's not a ceiling fan box. So I might have to put a ceiling fan box in, okay? Is this on the first floor? Is there an attic above it? Or is it in between floors? I'm, I'm having a conversation with them. And I don't know. I do it in a way the person doesn't feel like I'm just drilling them. It's just like a conversation. And they are always, for me, they've always been open enough to give me this information because I'm asking in a way that's, I don't need them to be technical. I'm just, I'm asking questions, just different questions so that I know, but I'm also priming them for if they come out there. So I'm not scaring them with a the price. I'm just saying, well, you know, I might take a little bit more than, than normal because that box is not designed to hold it. And the last thing I want to do is use a box that's not rated for a fan and it fall down on you. Okay. It just wouldn't yeah, allow them to do that. Yeah. And the law wouldn't allow me to do that. So you know, I just want to get these things up front. Anyway, point is, I try to get as much information, okay, as I can before I head out to that job. Well, I had, I had uh, Andrew, he did four service calls on Friday, and I had a picture of Kate, the uh, Kate residence, which the ceiling fan wasn't working, and they wanted a dimmer. Well, my first question was, send me a picture of the ceiling fan. Well, my first question was, did you change out the remotes in the ceiling fan remote <laughs> control because sometimes those batteries will go out especially after yeah. having it for five years she said she did that i said okay well i'm gonna grab a universal you know i'll have my guy grab a universal remote and 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 controller and then also the dimmer i said well send me a picture of your switches and they were toggle style so again andrew had everything out just because i asked those two questions i said can you send me a picture of 
of your ceiling fan and the picture of your switches and she did and he went into the supply house picked all that stuff up went to her house knocked it out within an hour boom 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 it was just that simple because instead of going and and some people go oh well you're, you're you're trying to take money out of the pocket no we're not we're trying to get the customer in and out and that problem solved quick so so we, we're still going to make money sure. you know i'm i'm not going to lose that much money where i have to tell my guy okay go to the job assess it and then go grab it that's more of like a commercial and commercial yeah. electricians man you guys at supply houses eating donuts drinking coffee <laughs> just stealing from your company bruh like All just right, now, stealing now, now, from now. them man no, ah. no, hold on we can't offend half our audience now but i will I tell you hone said something that 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 rings true sometimes you can't help it the person that gets the call in the office isn't savvy enough to ask these questions that I get. Oh. So let me tell you how you combat that. You ready? There's a certain level of tasks that you can put to pen to paper. And I mean, for example, you could sit down and say ceiling fan calls. Here are the 10 questions that you ask the customer. Tell them it's a survey that helps determine which electrician we're sending out. We have different electricians in our company. So, you know, so, Somebody says, I want a ceiling fan installed. Okay, what room is it in? What's the current lighting situation in there now? What's the height of the ceiling? Okay, there's certain questions that you can pre-put um, on paper. And then think about all the possible questions that you could actually have a flow chart. Again, if you really thought about it, somebody's circuit breaker is not working. Okay, question. You can say, okay, circuit breaker's not working. Um, can you do me a favor? Can you look at the circuit breaker and tell me what type it is? It's right there on the panel. If you don't feel comfortable with doing that, that's okay. But can you help me? They'll look at it, and it'll tell you right on the sketch on there. It'll say whether it's a 20 amp or 30 amp or 15 amp or 50. Okay, excellent. Uh, inside the cover, does it happen to have a name of the manufacturer or the brand or what type it is? Is it a cut or hammer, square D, Siemens, or whatever? Look. You can have a chart where they simply go down a checklist and ask certain types of questions that at least gives you a little bit of an idea before you're going out so you're just not going out there blind. Because I realize that they're not going to always be able, excuse me, let me transfer you this over to so-and-so to answer these questions. Again, you, you, you know, the people get frustrated after a certain amount of time. They're like, dude, I just wanted an electrician. I get it. But there are certain things that you can put down in a flow chart for the person to help the person that's taking the call know how to distinguish and ask some common questions. One is to let you know whether or not they're going to have to go to the supply house, whether they have to make a trip to the house, then back to the supply house. If it's Cutler Hammer, 20 amp breakers. Um, another thing that I like to do, I like to get images. So again, may, may not work depending on the size of your company. If the girl up front or a guy up front who doesn't want to do that. But I always tell people, can you take a picture of the panel? Can you take a picture of the breaker? Um, if you're talking about a ceiling fan and you're, when you're, can you do me a favor? Can you take a picture and just text it to this number or whatever of, of the, maybe you don't feel comfortable with that. Um, some people do, some people don't personally for me as much, if they don't, if I have to ask a couple questions and, and, and ask for a picture or something and they get all pissy with me over it, then I probably don't want to do the job anyway. That's me. I'm probably going to say, well, this ain't going to work out right because I'm just asking they wanna, some questions. So they I don't want to help me save them money because you're yeah. going to pay me more just to come out there then go to the supply house and then come back and then it's just, like you said I, I think if you ask the right questions up front um hones and i know that it's not a perfect world man and even your secretary or your receptionist whatever answer those questions they may not be 100 percent perfect um sometimes you got to put a set eyes on it but it, yeah it is better than nothing at least you get some type of description yeah yeah, they could ask, so. ask, where is it? You know, it, it can be very general, too. So you can ask, like, maybe they say receptacles are not working. Yeah, I'm calling you because my receptacle's not working. Okay, where is the receptacle located? It's in the bedroom. Okay. Well, that might tell me that I need to, um, it might be an AFCI issue. Okay. Yeah. Depending on the age of the house. I don't, I don't know those type of things. But you can come up, I mean, look, you're skilled enough at this trade that you can come together and put together common answers to common questions that somebody answering the phone could ask and at least get you a little bit of info rather than you're just saying taking a call going out there and you're sending somebody out there blind you know what i'm saying i like to to get a little bit of an information from somebody for example i get a call the other day and the guy's like i want to add a receptacle uh in my um what did he say was it in his um his garage 
And I said, okay, I said, where's your panel? He said, well, it's, it's, in, it's in the garage. I was like, oh, excellent. Okay. He said, I said, and where do, you want the, where do you want the receptacle? He said, well, it's just a simple, convenient receptacle. I said, okay, where do you want it? I said, near the panel, okay? Below the panel? That's what I'm fishing for, you know, and uh, pun intended. And, he, you know, I said, okay, is your, is your panel in the wall or is it mounted on the surface? In other words, can you see the whole box or is it in the wall and all you see is a cover? Oh, well, it's in the wall. Okay. I said, where do you want the receptacle? I want the receptacle on the opposite wall on the other side of the garage. Okay. Um, is there an attic above it? He goes, no, no, it's the second floor. I said, okay. I said, you want to get it to the other side, right? Yeah, I want it on the other, I want totally on the other side of the wall. I said, okay, you, are you okay with the fact that I might have cut some holes in your wall? That I might have to cut some access ports in your hole? And, and, and I always do, and you don't have to do this, but I'm honest. I am not a gypsum repairer or sheet rocker. I'm not into painting. I don't even paint my own house. I don't like it. I hate the task. So I'm certainly not going to do it as an electrical contractor. So I let them know, well, if I'm going to get from point A to point B, I'm going to probably have to open up some areas to fish it. Now, I don't know which way your joists run. I don't know. Might be less than necessary. Might be just one box in the middle. We'll put a cover on it. I don't know. And I can fish it from point A to point B. I don't know, but are you okay with the fact that I might have to cut some, but I do not repair sheetrock. I do not paint. That would be a task that you'd have to. Now, some people don't want to bring that up because they're thinking the person's going to say, well, crap, you're negative already. I'm not, I don't want you out here. For me, that's perfect because I don't want to go out there. Yeah. Right? I'm at the point in my electrical career now, and I don't want to go out there where I'm going to be patching crap. I don't mind going out there and cutting my round holes and fish holes and, and get you from point A to point B. I don't mind that unless there's an attic and I can get above there and, and get it, then that's great. But I ask these questions and not just because I want to find out the job, but I also do it for me to know whether or not I'm interested in it or not. Yeah. And I don't have a problem after all that telling somebody, yeah, you know, I don't really have the time to do that. You know, there's some you know, other people that probably have time to do that. But again, uh, that type of thing. Now, Eddie, do I clean up my mess? Absolutely. I always clean my mess up. Absolutely. I will clean my mess up. I go in clean, come out clean, look very professional, but I am not going to patch sheetrock. I'm just, just not, it's just not. And Texas no, is yeah. terrible because Texas has all this orange peel or this knockdown crap on the wall. Everybody's got this knockdown crap. My house is this knockdown crap. If it's just a plain wall, I might even entertain it, but this knockdown stuff, I can't do that. Hire somebody to do it. Yeah. I ain't into it. Bob, that's a, an extreme example of what I mean by is, you know, ask enough questions, you'll, you'll realize what somebody wants. You know, that type of thing. Ultimately, with that case, the guy said, well, I don't guess I need it on the other side. I don't care if it's under the panel. When I told him I had to cut holes and all that, he was like, I don't really need it over there. You can just put it right under the panel if you want or right near it. I was like, that job yeah, became but... a little more appealing to me. You know what I'm saying? I, I have guys that will go in that same situation and they'll just they'll tell them, no, we, 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 like, we can't get it up there. It's impossible. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not it, impossible. it is possible. You're just going to make 10 six inch holes. And it is what it is. <laughs> it is, it's is gonna, what it is. You know, because I'm, I'm going to make one everywhere I need one. I'm, I'm not going to yeah. try to, you know, again, I, I'm professional. There are guys, with what yeah, I but do. Jay, yeah, but there are, Gary, there are guys who will go to a job that could have cut two holes and be done in an hour that'll sit there trying to fish it and take eight hours and charge the customer eight hours of labor because there's so much pride. They want to think they can do it without cutting two holes. Me, I don't care. You call me whatever you want. I don't really care because I'm going to the bank either way. But at the end of the day, I'm cutting the holes. Sheetrock is easy to repair. Just not by me. Yeah by somebody else that's a great you know what i tell them electricity kills but sheet rock doesn't that's a great diy job for you there's a lot of uh videos online about patching sheet rock have at yeah. it and, but and I'm see not ernesto doing... ernesto brings up a good point he says I, I never patch regardless but i have another partner that does and and that's that's a way to actually share the business bring in either share buddy. the wealth yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Share it. Say, hey, I have to make these holes. I'm going to make about six of them. 
and I'll put him back. But, but I know a guy. If you want him to? Uh, I know a guy, and here's his number. Boom. <laughs> Beautiful. That's and kind that's, of like the old thing we used to call uh, BNI, Business Networking International. Yes, Whereas yep. I was a member of that for years. Actually, I, I kind of love the concept of that. And I had in that group, there was a plumber, there was a mechanic, there was a sheet rocker, there was a, and we would have their cards handy and they would do the same for me. Hey, if you're growing a business in the area and it costs you a little, a little money, but look up the BNI networking, because again, it might it might cost you a little up front, but once you generate a rapport with these guys and gals, they will share your business cards like water. And it's it's a you scratch my back, I scratch your back uh, relationship and givers gain concept with uh, BNI. I think it's a great organization. It's all about making money. It's what we're in business for. If you're not in business to make money, then you're a 501c charitable organization and that's fine. You know, appreciate you, but I'm in business to make money. So that's beautiful, uh, Ernesto. Yes, definitely have somebody. You know, here's another thing. We've talked about this in other shows, Jay. Form relationships with other trades. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call a plumbing guy. If you're an electrical contractor getting into business and say, hey, I'd love to take you out for a cup of coffee and talk to you about my business. I know that you're a plumber. I'm an electrical guy, but you might run into some situations. I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee. I'm, I'm, I want to learn a little bit more about your business. Yep, I'm not a plumber. Have a cup of coffee with them. Even now, I guess in the COVID days, I mean, Texas is opened up now. No masks anymore. And I got my first shot. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a good plumber buddy that works works with that basement company. And I, I have my addition that we're doing. And I said, um, I said, Nate, we call him Nate the Great. He's, he's a single man shop, man. He always has that big old Milwaukee cordless concrete freaking jackhammer. Boom, 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 boom huge man and and i always look at him like nate when are you gonna ever just hire someone man when are you ever gonna hire someone so uh i go i go hey nate i'm doing my audition do you, you want to take a look he goes jay i'm so slammed i i can't even take a look at it man i he's he's so backed up and so you, you're right you you want to talk to these guys and ask them and 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 find out what their workload is because again like nate i wouldn't offer someone or I wouldn't recommend him to somebody who's looking for a plumber knowing he's swamped. That just doesn't, that doesn't but make it gives sense you the opportunity me. to get to know another plumber. I mean, that's a great, yeah. hey, look, here's the other thing. If you're an introvert and you want to get over that and you want to start opening up a little bit, do, do yourself a favor. Go to your, go to, go, go to your, go to your phone book and, or go on the internet and find a very well connected contractor in your area that doesn't do what you do. Give them a call, come out of your shell and say, hey, I'd like to buy you a cup of coffee. I'd like to find out a way that, that, that as I'm growing my business that I can help you. And, and I just like to talk about and always make it about their business. Don't call somebody up like that who's already successful and try to make it. I want to moot your business. That doesn't work. I tell you, I'm going to give you a secret. What works? Call them up and be about them. Everything about them. Say, hey. I've heard a lot of great things about you. Okay. Maybe true or not, but you say, look, I, I you know, I, I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee. If you have time, I, I'd like, you know, I'm a contractor too. I'm not in your market. I don't do what you do. I have no interest in doing what you do, but I'm interested in learning about what you do. And it's a lot easier to bridge that conversation one-on-one -on -one when they can't just walk away or hang up. And, you know, some people just can't do that. Um, but that's basically what you do in a BNI. You know, you go there, you do your 60 seconds, you talk to everybody in the room, tell them what you have, what you offer, and, you know, givers gain, and everybody takes your business cards, and people, they basically, your sales force is out there working for you. And, you know, but I'm saying, if you're not in BNI, you can do it yourself. Pick a, pick a, a, a carpenter company, a builder. Pick a plumber. Pick a mechanical company. That That's all they do. They don't do electrical. Not one of those ones that, do, that does everything. Um Pick a realtor, okay, if that's what's your market, you're talking at, you know, trying to gain some flip work. Uh, pick a home inspector that's very popular in the area and you want to take them out and get a cup of coffee or something like that. You're, I'm buying. Love to, love to meet with you. Look for different people that could benefit you, but also think about how you can benefit them. And so say to them, look, I'd love to get some of your business cards. I'd love to be able to, to share in be able to give your cards out. And then when you're right there before it's over, you might look at them and go, Jay, 
Um, I'd love to leave you some of my business cards, you know, in case, you know, again, I'm, I know we, we just met or whatever, but I'd love to give you some of my business cards. Maybe you can share them. Uh, if anybody has any questions about electrical, I'm, I'm here to answer the questions if they need it. Just start a conversation. You've got absolutely nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, and you get to know other trades out there. Or get in B&I, and it's basically the same concept. And cost you a little bit of money. you got to do lunches. you got to buy lunches. And I can't remember what the cost is anymore, but it's, it's well worth it if you're starting in business. Uh, to, to, to build those relationships. You'd be surprised. And that wasn't yep. what our show was about. And we actually ran 30 minutes overnight. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm always long winded. So with that said, Jay, do we have anything else to share tonight? Also, no, if you I'm... want to get your CBD, visit our sponsors, CBD pure, just go to our website, master the NEC.com. You'll see the banner at the top of the page. Click that banner and you'll see the ointments, the drops, the new vapor spray they have. What else they got? Um, uh, soft gels, whatever. If you're into the CBDs, again, very legal, nothing illegal about it. Um, but cream, I'm thinking I need some cream for that. <laughs> I need that cream for that uh, thing. So anyway, that's all I've got tonight, Jay, unless you got something else you want to share with everybody. Oh. Thanks. Uh, thanks for sticking out and sticking with us and commenting on the on the chat line to keep us going. Because absolutely, if not, we're just talking to each other. Oh yeah, which is I did see a, a bad I did see a, I did see a post that somebody said come up north and come up north and work on that. Uh, uh, what did he yeah, say? Was it plastic? No, no way would I want to do. It. Man, dude, I won't even fix sheetrock. Much less go work on that stuff. Man, you got to be out of your mind. That stuff too much. No, I, I, just, I can't. It's like watching I've done a lot of remodels dry. in lath and plaster, man. I've done a lot of remodels in that. And, and some, of it's, some of it has like that chicken wire mesh in it and some doesn't. And, and they're the old Denver homes. And so um, definitely put in a hazard, <laughs> hazard yeah. cost for that because you never know what you're going to find in those walls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> never know. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for listening tonight. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the, uh, the topic tonight. It's not always code. Sometimes we just talk trade and uh, we accept people's topics. So if you want to email me and Jay, just send emails to host, H-O-S-T at electricianlive.com and we will get that topic on air. We love having different topics. You might want to talk about industry, hiring, firing, job markets, things like that. Anything that you feel an interest, it doesn't always have to be code. Tonight's episode wasn't code driven, uh, but sometimes we do talk code. It just wasn't tonight. So Jay, you have a great week and uh, yep. I will see you next Saturday. Again, we're thinking about changing the date. Uh, give us your thoughts also. Okay, Eddie said he'll send some donuts. Absolutely. I like the glazed. That's right. But I also like the ones with the chocolate icing on them, too. That's mm, scrumptious. I love when the sign comes on at Kris Krispy Kreme saying, hot donuts. Hot donuts. Inject, inject my donut with the raspberry filling, and I'm right there. I, I, you know, it's dripping off the face and on the Ooh, T-shirt. See, or, just give me the plain yeah, donuts. Uh, just give me the plain donuts. All right, guys. Till next time, stay safe. God bless. Electrician Live with your host, Paul Abernathy and Jay Grunberg.